Yeah, is everybody connected to Emit or how do we do this? This is a hybrid. This is the first time we've done a hybrid. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. They are going to be people remotely. There's a lot more people outside than inside. Unfortunately, this session is 3 a.m. in the West Coast, I think, or in the East Coast. So it's midnight in the West Coast. So I don't know who. Uh... It's like 2 a.m. Yeah. So for the workshop, I'll probably bring up everybody that I know. I'll invite them on stage. So we got Oz. Let me see if I can invite Oz. Um, maybe the first topic is will. So I don't have an agenda. Okay, this is what the workshop is supposed to be. We will just have random discussions. Uh, first thing is I'll put you, Victor. Victor can talk about some of the work he's been doing on TDC and JSON. Shows a couple of examples. I don't know how we organize this. Maybe you go sit there or. OK, I can't hear the people remote. Can somebody acknowledge from remote? Oz, can you hear me? They're huh? they're oh, they're sending messages. Yeah. OK, let me see. Um. Uh, how do you show the messages there? OK, OK, hey, Oz, you can hear me? Just say something there. Okay, and I can see Davide and uh, Ed Cree is here. He was supposed to. Okay, so uh, you will have to log in and share your screen, right? Are you connected? Is it for me? I know that my laptop is is, is muted. So um, it's definitely not my laptop. Yo, uh, how do we do this? Do I give him this instead and I use this? Huh? That's the better way to do it? Yeah, OK, maybe. So this is kind of new to us. We have no idea how to do this. There's two to three times more people outside remotely than they're, si than they're sitting here. All right. I'm pleased to welcome David Ahan to the TC workshop. <laughs> Oops. Okay, you want to share your screen? Oh, I need, I, I need to, to invite you, right? Uh, okay, I gotta figure this out, man. So, so how do I share my screen? Oh, stop sharing. Yeah, easy. Okay. Uh, there's a button at the bottom there. Invite him to the stage. Oh, I I have to invite you. Yeah. And how do I invite you? I have to go to people, I think, find you. There you are. Invite to the stage. OK, you got to accept my invitation. And then I think what I'll do is put my screen here. So people are more to see it. And you go ahead. So we'll make this interactive. There is no agenda. Okay. Uh, next, we can talk about the uh, the stats. Oz, is that's okay. And then Mirad, that's David, or is that the two topics? I think. Are there two two topics? One one is. What is the issue with the OVS guys? Are we going to talk about that? The, the, yeah, the pipe versus OK. OK, so two topics there, one on, and one on stats. So three after this. I need to wake up. 
And just so everybody knows, this is illegal. You're not allowed to drink drinks. So don't do what I do. Do what I say. Don't bring any drinks. OK, Victor, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You can you make it full screen? And, and the, yeah, the fonts are a little bit small. Because for me, I'm just sharing my screen. Uh, maybe the fonts are a little bit small. Well, no, so like he's, he's saying is he's doing full screen. It's just, yeah, here's. I am not doing full screen. OK, I have to go full screen here somewhere. Uh, let's see. But if we do full screen, I am not going to. All right. Ah, there you go. We, can we still see the conversations going on? Maybe, uh, maybe you can turn the conversations on that one. I think we're mastering uh, hybrid. No, uh, uh, I think the phones are still too small, Victor. Yeah, much better, I think. You probably want to talk about the general patch, or and they can't hear you unless you use the mic. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, can't hear you. I can hear you, but I don't think that mic is working. It's on. Can remote people hear him? Yeah. So they have to. Let me. Oh, shit. How do I get through? Sorry about that. Yeah. You have to send the chat. Because you're can, you, can you cancel that one? Yeah. Oh, messages, yes. yes. Yeah, but it's only like direct messages sent to you. It's not like the general. Oh, you're not a host. You're not a host. I'm shit. speaker. Yeah, uh, that one. Yes. Thank you. All right. Now we know what to do, right? OK. OK. So basically what I I'm going to show you guys is the match JSON feature we introduced into the TDC test. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but it's a, an automatic uh, test framework that we developed for TC. So I'm going to try to show you guys an example. Yeah, so for example, here <clears throat> I have one of the tests that simply adds a pass action. Action list command. And this match pat pattern here is just a, it's a regular expression pattern that we use to match against the, the output of this uh, list command. I can show you guys real quick how the command is. Second. Gak action pass index and index eight. As you can guys see here, so action order, gak action pack pass, and then index eight. Like it's here. This works out fine, etc. It's okay, but we have a simpler way to do this, which is what we did, which is match JSON. So you have this option to see the output like this, but you can also use the task J option. Let me beautify it a bit. And with JQ, you can see this as JSON. So this as JSON is really easier to understand and easier to pass for the tests. And basically, that's what we did. We took advantage of this JSON output from TC and used it in our test. So I try to show those two side by side. 
So this is the, on the right, I have the, the command as in the old version, which without match JSON. So it's just a regular expression pattern matching. matching. Uh, you see it, it's more confusing and less readable. And in this side, I have the JSON one. So everything is a field, right? So you have order, you have the kind, you have index, ref. It's much easier to pass and much simpler for the person who's uh, writing the tests to basically to write the tests and, and check everything and et cetera. So it's, it simplifies things a lot for us. And that's basically it. <laughs> Uh, it's it's now a local one, but not in the. I didn't push to the mailing list yet. Can you do it live? <laughs> <laughs> that would be really cool, man. If you could. Yeah, I can try, man. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> you can do it, man. Ooh, okay. let's do it. Let me find it first. Let's see. All right. What is that? The log. Let's let's review this before you. Right? Can we wait first? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there, there, there. I it have is. comments, man. Wait. Yeah. Is there a spelling mistake? No, that looks good. Okay. So. <laughs> That's all I wanted to check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go for it, man. Do you commit? Yeah, yeah. Do you push? I'm sorry. No, no. I'm serious. Push it. Push to the mailing list. Or? Yeah. What okay. the hell? Yeah, yeah. Just give me a sec. <laughs> can we turn on the camera so we can see this live? We can. It's recorded. Wait, 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 Victor. I think we can turn on. How do you do it? Um, Victor, you unshared. Why, why don't you share your screen? Can you share your screen? All right, then we'll bring it back to Victor. You go ahead. Never mind, sorry. Just just take over the screen and then you can do it live there. Okay, so our next topic after this is going to be what which one do you want to talk about? The stats. The stats one. So Oz is here. But let, let's get this over. Oh, Tony. Come on, man. Ah, that's not cool. All right. We'll give you a chance at the end again. All right, so let's see if Oz is here. Um, yeah, you can let go of the screen then. Thanks, Victor. Yeah. Um, how do we get back my... So I'm going to invite Oz and Ed. Actually, 
I'll have to do it this way. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, 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 it's working. About to invite Ed. Ed, right here. Bring back to stage. Okay. Uh, can, you, can you guys both hear us? Oz? I'm here. Okay, so we're just going to go about this action thing that happened in the mailing list. Maybe see if we can resolve it here. If not, okay. at least we'll start a high bandwidth discussion instead of email, aka voice. <laughs> so, uh, who, who's going to start? I guess I will start. Uh, can you see my? Can you see my screen? The slides? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh uh, full screen. Full screen. Yeah, full screen. Let's try. Okay, let me try to. I have to put this there. there is, Jamal, Jamal. I have to wake up, man. So, all right. Your own knows. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so I just wanted to provide some background to to this discussion why and why this is happening right now. Um, so, regarding statistics, there's actually a difference between the um, software model and the hardware offload model. In TC software, there's a very clear separation between the classifiers and the actions. There is a platform to, to uh, basically plug in, um, uh, and there's an abstract the API for classifiers, and there's an abstract API for actions, and, and, and statistics are counted on the actions, meaning that if a packet is classified, we don't really care how it was classified, but once an action is executed, the, the, the counters are updated on, on the counters themselves. Now, when hardware offload was executed, it, um, it was a bit different because in hardware offload, the counters are updated when the when the classifier or like when the filter is 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 dumped. So, for example, when you do TC flower filter show, for example, then then basically the when when flower dumps its filters, it knows that a specific filter is in hardware. Therefore, then it queries the relevant driver to receive to read the counters for that filter. And then once it receives um, that counter, that single counter values, it updates it to all the actions that are are executed as part of this filter. Now, this makes sense as long as there are no branching action, namely police actions, M meaning that it, it makes sense that once a packet is classified, then then all its actions are going to be executed. So, so it's the same statistics value that applies to all the actions. Oz, can you make the screen uh, full screen, maybe, if you don't mind? I, I, can, I can try. Let me see that. Let me, I think I need to uh, change the screen here a bit. One second. Uh, let me do it this way. Is this better? Yes. Okay. So, so as we we're saying, the, the software model is clear that, that statistics are basically in software stored on the actions. When we do hardware offload, what the integration is that um, that that basically um, flower the, the classifier flower, for example, queries the statistics based on um, on uh, on a filter cookie. That basically this identifies the filter ID and and the statistics are are updated per filter instead of per action and basically that one statistics value is 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 basically um, propagated to all the filter actions. Now this makes logical sense as long as when a filter is matched, then all the actions are executed. Um, but this 
breaks when there's an action that is branching. And this um, became evident when we started offloading the police action because police can drop packets, for example. So it's not the same action statistics value that applies to all the actions in the filters. Now, the first attempt to address this was done actually, was submitted by, by Netronome, uh, which introduced uh, a new um, mechanism, which is called hardware actions, meaning that it integrated it in a way that now it's, because we know actions can be created either um, when filters are created, these are called bind actions, or they can be created regardless of the filters using the TC action utility. So they um, in introduced a new uh, callback um, scheme to um, basically notify drivers when um, TC actions are created in hardware. So when so so there's um, so there's a so there's a new callback API um, specifying that when an action is created, it's directed to the driver to create those actions. When an action is del deleted, and when um, uh, statistics of an action is required, there is an API for the driver to query the statistics for that specific action. But the way that it is currently implemented and it's upstreamed is is in a way that you that those in hardware actions can only be created by TC action API. Now this works well with the OVS integration because these are also Nebel's shared actions because the TC, this is like the first step of separating filters from action also from when it comes to hardware offload. Um, because now you can create an action and you can then associate this action to multiple filters. Uh, and there's a way to identify this action by like the tuple of uh, action uh, type and action ID and drivers can work with that. Now, um, this mechanism um, is not enough for, for three use cases that we identified. Um, the first is, for example, if you're not using TC actions, but you're using what's called bind actions, basically I'm creating the actions when I'm creating a filter. So I'm here, for example, just creating a, a, a flower classifier, which does, um, but which uses police action, which can either drop or pipe. And then if it pipes, it, it forwards the packet. So, 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 so the actions, the TC actions, hardware actions API is not called for this use case. Um, another interesting use case is, is even if we do use the, the hardware actions API, for example, we do do TC action add, we create the, the action beforehand and we use it and we use its index when, uh, when we're creating a filter, the, the hardware, uh, the, the hardware uh, action infrastructure works on only on this one single action. So the police statistic when you dump the statistics of this of these actions, the police action will be updated correctly. But for example, we have here an action, for example, a sample action that precedes the, po the police action. Um, it will not. It, 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 so so this logic will not apply to the sample action. So for example, if we trans, if if there were two packets going through this filter, the first packet um, was was dropped and the second packet was piped, then what we will see is that we will see one packet for sample, two sub packets for police, and one sub packet for mute, because we're taking, again, usually we put the counter like in hardware on the last action that is executed in hardware, and therefore it will basically count only the actions that were, um, that passed the police action. But we didn't. It doesn't count the packets that drop because they, these these actions are never executed in hardware. I will just go through the third use case. The third use case is is also something that we um, plan to um, support, which is uh, a jump uh, control for the police jump control. Um, what, one of the conform exceed uh, controls that you can specify for police is jump. Basically, when you can jump over actions. And when you're starting to jump, then obviously you're, you're creating a, a branch here. Sorry, you're creating a branch here that uh, that that some of the actions that 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 one basically one statistics um, value does not apply to all the actions in this filter. Um, and and because we we've started to support police, and because um, we want to support this jump. Um, um, control for 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 some use cases for some production use cases that were that we want to support. 
then um, it became uh, uh, it became now uh, that this issue has become uh, important regarding how do we how can we up how can drivers update hardware statistics per actions rather than per flow which is the current design um, any any questions about the use cases before we start discussing the possible uh, uh, design alternatives for supporting that? Uh, I'm not sure if everyone can. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's we clear. can hear everyone. <laughs> yeah, can, uh, can you hear me? Also? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, as you say, I think it's clear. It's the. It sounds like you use index in some cases and not others. And right. You seem to be saying the problematic part is when you don't use index. Yeah, that's one aspect when you don't use index. And the other aspect is that we're going to introduce this jump control. And when we're starting to jump over actions, then then we also would need to update the actions. So, so that's, that's a branch statement, right? You, so yeah, if, if, it doesn't, mm -hmm. if it exceeds, I think, you you go basically to the last mirror. Exactly. Right. So, for example, you hit yeah. the first one. Yeah. For example, if we if we exceed, we, we send to depth three. If we don't exceed, we send to depth two. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't quite follow the mailing list, so I'm learning what you yeah. have, the issue is. I, I still haven't seen what the issue is, but keep going. No, no, so, so the issue is, is that... Else have a question? Sorry? Ed? Um, I mean, I'd just add that the other thing that's also uh, broken with the existing way of doing things is when you have shared actions. Uh, so if you create an, one of these TC actions, not necessarily a policer, and then you add it to multiple filters, then the the, the current way things work, it, it can't guarantee that it will always get the right stats. Right, right. That's that's exactly right. I'm focused on police, but you're right. You're right. There's also the shared actions use case. Right. So is that because uh, because if you share actions, would it index be sufficient to identify that specific action you're sharing? Yes. So that's what the hardware action API that was added actually helps us, like actually supports shared actions because you create the action, you identify the action by the index, and there's one API that that uh, that updates it. Um, the only problem is is that when you create bind actions and then you share them, that, or, or not everything can be shared in hardware. But um, um, so 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 it's so shared actions are actually partially supported today, right? Because um, if I go back to the way that um, if we would define, for example, if, for example, if this police action was to be shared between multiple filters, then um, the TC action, when we create the TC action, the, the police action using the, the, the TC action API, then at once the action is created, the callback is created to the driver instantiating this action with the was specifying the action ID and and everything and all the action parameters and then when it is used in filters then then the drivers can actually understand that this is a shared actions because based on the ID but when you want to query the statistics because it's a shared action and it can be updated from multiple filters because there's a separation between these the this, the action that was created here from the rest of the actions then um, um, there is there's a specific callback that is called to the driver when you want to get the, the statistics of the police action, that is the hardware action. So actually the hardware action infrastructure makes sense for um, for police shared actions, as long as you work with it this way, you create the actions using TC actions and not using bind actions. And, uh, and 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 there's no actions preceding it, or you're not jumping or anything else. Does this make sense? That was. <laughs> yeah. Simon, so, so you, you have a comment? Yeah, hi. I, I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, yeah. So, it, firstly, uh, I apologize for this bit mess, and it's kind of based on my design. Uh, it, it was designed for the bind actions, but I, I would like to raise yet one further problem with it, which is essentially the the way the mechanism works is you end up with the counter for the police action uh, which is dependent on, on whether the the packets uh, were, were succeed or, or fail with, with relation to the limit um, but actually in the original use case it was designed for what we would need is 
actually the number of times the, the flow has been hit at all, regardless of failure or uh, success of the police action. Um, so, so actually there's a bug there too that we're, we're separately working on. Um, I'm interested to see if your solution solves that problem too. Yeah, so actually, I, the, the, the approach that we took here is, is a bit, um, is creating, <laughs> it's in parallel to this feature, okay? Um, so, so let me give the overview of, of what we consider. The first approach to, to, so basically what we want to do is, is, to, is to, to allow drivers to specify statistics per action, okay, in the filter. So one option that we explore in this section, what we sent on the mailing list, is to basically extend the existing flow of load API to return an array of, because currently the, the flow of load API, when it queries the drivers for the statistics, it returns one statistics value that should apply to all the filters. So instead of just adding one, let's return an array of, of statistics corresponding to um, the action list of the, the filters action list, and and the the aim for this was to be a very high performance um, API because we only have a single callback, a single driver callback because statistics are um, are very um, frequently like querying statistics is, is very frequent with OVS. OVS queries all the installed filter statistics every second. So, so, so it's a performance sensitive um, feature and, and, and we wanted to avoid querying every action in the action list because you can have many actions per filter. And, and this use case of, of basically specifying an act, a, a, a filter per action is only relevant for filters that have branching actions like, 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 like filters using police. Uh, other than let's put uh, shared actions aside. I know we have an issue with shared actions, but we don't really support shared actions right now. There's no use case for shared actions right now. Uh, right now. So if we put that aside, there, it's, there's a very limited number of, 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 of filters that would actually even need to use this API. So we have uh, the possibility of either returning the, the single um, the, the, the using the current API and we're also will be backward compatible to all the existing implementations or you can use the the statistics array um, the other approach was basically to reuse what Netronome introduced uh, the the hardware action API that basically this does a good work of basically uh, creating an action object and being able to query a driver for statistics for a specific action. So, so actually the, the infrastructure that is currently in place is it work fits very well for this. Uh, we can use this infrastructure to query a hardware specific action. And once this is in place, we can actually change the API in a way that um, if, if, the, if we want to update the per action stats, and also if we want to update via the TC, if we want to update the statistics via the TC action, utility, which currently does not update statistics, it just displays the current statistics. And the only way to, to update uh, um, hardware statistics is through dumping the flows rather than dumping the actions. Then we could use the specific action API to, to do that. Um, the, the thing is, um, so, so let's just look at, drill down a bit into the both alternatives before we open up it up for discussion. Um, um, the, the, the only nitty part about extending the flow of load API is that TC actions are not directly mapped with hardware offload actions because there is an intermediate layer translating TC actions to hardware offload actions so that this infrastructure can be used also by uh, NFT. So for example, the P edit, the TC, a single TC P edit function can be translated to multiple uh, hardware offload items. So this is something that should be considered when we're doing this uh, arrays, and and because just so we know that the that the actions array and the offloads array are not necessarily aligned, and and the action is and the, also the way is that as we said that this is um, 
something that is performance sensitive and it probably will be used for a small fraction of the filters that are installed, then there's a question of how do you allocate this array of filters, who allocates it and, and when and why. So first alternative is, was to allocate it by the drivers, use it in the infrastructure and free by the infrastructure. It's pretty ugly, but it's very efficient because you only allocate it when you need it and that's it. If we go for a more cleaner approach, we can allocate it on the stack when we're creating the flow of old objects, but it's a very large object. Statistics are a very large object and it can be for multiple, um, for, for, for all the possible, like for, for a very big action array. So this can be stressful on the stack and some architecture stack is not too, too, um, too big. And the other way is dynamic allocation to basically just dynamically allocate this array every time. Um, a few words just on the alternative of querying action stats. Now, as we said, in terms of the platform, like TC and uh, Flower and uh, Actions and everything, integration is, uh, is actually pretty nice because we can reuse the hardware action API to query the action counters. The real, real, real complication is in drivers because um, um, hardware action uh, the, the hardware action is not, in hardware, it's very, very, very inefficient to create a counter per action. Um, and, and therefore, we would need to create the hardware counter basically for an array of actions. Basically, this one counter will apply to, if one counter applies to all the actions, as in the current use cases with non-branching use cases, where basically you can take an array of action and map them to a specific counter, this is the way to do it, in, to continue doing this in hardware. So this mapping, um, when now uh, we will we provide an infrastructure to query a specific action counters, then basically we would need to maintain um, a very um, complex um, data structures in the drivers that are complex to maintain and also um, uh, have um, performance uh, issues when they're queried because we would need to a hash table that would map the action to the counter. Once the counter is read, we would need to cache on all its dependent actions, all the actions that basically hang on the same counters. We would need to um, to to cache this 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 value that we read on them for future queries, and this requires list iterations and locks. And every and basically every time that we would need to um, get the um, statistics of a specific filter when a, when a filter dump is done, then we will basically need to iterate all the actions because we don't know. Basically, the bottom line is that we don't know if an action uh, statistics was updated when if the user listed an action or listed the filter, and 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 to maintain that, it's 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 uh, it's it's a lot of uh, complex code, but it also will have some performance overhead. So, so this is the issue to now. These are my slides, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and and now I'm open for your uh, questions, discussions. Thanks. Yeah, we'll just open it to the floor. Ed, I know you had challenges with this, so maybe you should go as much as you want, and then. Yeah. I, I, okay. So I think the. Uh... So, so, so I'm definitely in favour of the um, of the using the query action counter, essentially, um, just just everywhere, and like that we kind of uh, deprecate the uh, per filter starts callback. Um, uh, the thing about uh, needing a hardware counter. If you need a hardware counter for every action, that's loads of counters, and that's inefficient. So the uh, the the approach we took with EF one hundred, I don't I don't know if this is still true now, but at the time, the only uh, the only TC actions that had the the stats uh, called back in the uh, in the action definition were basically things that looked kind of like a delivery. So you've got um, drop and mirrored redirect and mirrored mirror and so the the approach we took is that essentially there's in in, in hardware there's a, essentially a counter associated with each delivery so that then if you've got something like i don't know a vlan push action you don't have a counter on that you don't collect stats on that because it's generally 
not interesting. So you're interested in deliveries, and if you added police, which we don't do yet in our hardware yet, but then you're interested in stats at the branch points and at the deliveries, but you're not interested in, in, in stats on something like a VLAN push or a P-edit or something that's happening uh, in between there, because like you know that as many packets go into it as come out of it, and, and so it's not it's not going to tell you anything you didn't already know. So at, at that point, then now that you have a now now you've essentially have got a one to one mapping between hardware counters and stats that you want to report back to software, at which point what really makes sense is what well, either either just when you do a, a TC S filter show, the kernel just uh, calls essentially the HW action stats API for each action in for, for each for each action that's bound to that rule. And then obviously if you do a TC action show it uh, calls the same API for that specific action to, to get the hardware stats. And so so either you just have a call a callback for that and that gets called that callback per action, but you only need to call it on uh, TC actions that have the stats called back in the in the def definition of that TC action, or if for performance reasons you want to make it a single call, then ideally what what you would want is to be able to go back to how it used to be before. So before the flow offload API came along, before uh, before Pablo unified. TC and NFT, uh, the when the driver got the stats callback, instead of filling s some stuff in to a structure and then returning, it was calling a function. It, it, it was calling a function directly to go and fill the um, the stats into the. Uh, in, in fact, into the TC actions, it was an it was an action based stats API. Uh, unfortunately, most of the drivers weren't using it that way, which is why I think uh, we ended up with this flow-based thing when 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 Pablo unified them. So if 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 you had that, maybe in the form of a uh, a per, a per action callback that is supplied by the yeah, you know, this supplied by the kernel with the request, so that um, we can because it could be either a, a, a TC action or an NFT action, and we don't know which, so we need that indirection. So then the driver can then call that function with the stats for each action it wants to update. That something like that would seem to me like the uh, the better way to do it. Or alternatively, if we if we need to do it all without indirection and keep the uh, keep the thing of return a bunch of stats. Then I noticed that uh, when the uh, when the CLS flower st uh, stats thing gets called, uh, one of the things that we're passed is a struct flow rule star, which therefore means that we have we should have access to the array of actions within that flow rule which means that we could have something stashed inside there, something in struct flow action entry. Some, some, and, we could, and we could maybe stash, stash our stats there before return. I think that's all I, I've got suggestions wise. Yes, so, but let me see that I follow you. Like in, in, the, first, in the first comment that that you raised. So, for example, if we do have a VLAN push action and then a forward action, uh, how would so what would you do with the VLAN push action? You would not update the hardware stats for that, or what? Yeah. So, it, so essentially, its hardware stats would just always read zero zero, which I, I when when I was last looking at this, yeah, when I was, when I was doing our driver stuff like three years ago, the software stats would also read, always read zero, zero for a VLAN action because it didn't collect them. 
I think that's possibly changed now that that was how it worked then. And that seemed that actually seems to make sense to me because the stats on that action aren't really useful. They're not informative, I think. Well, as far as I know, they are updated. I don't know about useful, but again, I, I, this is as far as I understand the current design. The, the, the logic is if an action was executed and VLAN push was executed, then it's counted. So and so yeah, in software, it is. Mm -hmm. I think the point is that it, because you you know certain actions, if the packet goes in, it will definitely come out, right? Like a VLAN push. So, mm -hmm. so you don't need to keep a hardware stat for this. You can differentiate between two different types of actions: one where you need actually to know the stat for it, and the other type where you can just derive it from surrounding information. And perhaps that leads to simplification. Definitely leads to simplification on the hardware side because it's, it's probably not practical to have stats for all the actions, right? Yeah, obviously in hardware we we, we put the we, we count it like on the last action on when or when the actions are branching, it's become more complicated. But we 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 slap the counter on some action. Yep. Um, but um, so so sorry, what I was referring to earlier i've now looked up the name so in the struct tc action ops uh for, for an action there is a dot stats update method that is the thing that things like vlan used to not have populated it and it now does i don't know why that was added so again i'm not sure what you're referring to again i did yep this is on yeah. hi folks uh, this is Marcelo. Um, to throw another thing in the discussion, <laughs> as you may have seen on the mailing list, we have uh, yeah two other topics touching the stats that can influence the discussion here. One of them is that OVS for the meters, uh, it wants to have different set of stats for the meter and for the flow that match it. So, Point is having one stat only on the action is not enough anymore, and we need another uh, set of actions for the flow, so that we can know that two different flows that are using a single shared meter they have different flow stats. The current proposal for that is to have a generic G act act in the beginning of the action list with just the control action of pipe so that we can count the packets that batch it in there. And then uh, following optimization that Ilya notes it that could be added to save memory and processing time, is exactly this, to have a new option to TC actions so that they can not have stats in the action itself. Because today all actions, they have stats, right? But as Edward was saying, uh, for some of them, we don't really care. Like, Today we care because they are there, but maybe we can have a, an official way or a, um, a not confusing way to ignore them. Make sense? So, Mar Marcelo, if I might add something, uh, which we haven't brought to the public yet, but I'm wondering with the first case, if, if maybe it is better to actually do a flow stack directly rather than derive it, which is the current suggestion of the mailing list. I think the mm -hmm. so go ahead. I, I had finished, please. Someone go ahead. So I, I think I prefer the um the the dummy action thing simply because it means we're introducing fewer new kinds of entities. Okay. So the, I guess the dummy action, is the dummy part doesn't appeal to me, but, but what you're saying is then we can kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's sort of simpler just to have, be able to have a, you know, G act okay pipe in there. That's okay. not, that's not introducing any new uh, concepts that are going to need new uh, framework and new, lots of new code. It's, it's yeah, comparatively simple. Yeah, I, I, I take your point. I, I just wanted to lay the option we have Thinky on the table. That's all. Okay. 
Yeah. I have a very basic question. So I think Ed, you said uh, you used one of the. Can can I draw on the board and it will be visible? Excuse me. Can you, can you focus the camera on this maybe and share the screen? I don't know if you guys can see me, but if, for example, I so I'm just drawing. Uh, is my drawing visible? Okay. Yes, I can see. It, you can see it, right? So if this was an action that branched, right, like Polisa, it goes to some other action and another action, and I think there was something like what, Porsche, VLAN, or some, some other action that didn't have a branch. So you have action one. I'm not naming what these are. Action three, action four. You don't, you don't want to put counters on some of these? You just you don't care about having a counter, for example, on this one here, but you want a counter on the other ones. What, what, what is the issue? Is there a hardware limitation on how many counters you can have? There's no, I mean, I, for, I mean, from our perspective, it's not like the hardware limitation. It's how you maintain it in software. Because we, for, if, for example, you do this, uh, what, the, what you drew here on the board, we would put um, a counter on A2. We would put a counter on A3 and a counter on A4 in hardware, for example, um, like very superficially, and and we would be and then in software we would be able to map which uh, software actions are mapped to which hardware counters. Right. Um, um, it's durable. Right. <laughs> it's, so, 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 I mean, it sounds like the, essentially the the reason you have the problem of needing that extra software mapping is because you're wanting to use the the counter on hardware action two, you're wanting to use that also uh, to supply stats for software action one. And I'm sorry. saying that... Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, is, that, is that right? So I'm not sure, again, can you repeat your point? I'm not sure. So, so, so the reason why you're needing the, uh, the mapping layer with all, all the, like, you know, you, all, all locking and mm -hmm. so on is because in, in this example is because the hardware counter that would be on hardware action two, you're use, using that both for the uh, stats on software action two and also on software action one. Exactly. Right. So what I'm saying is if we say that we don't bother with stats on software action one because it's not, it's not a branch point and it's not a leaf, so therefore the the there's not it's not going to be interesting to the user yeah if it's something like a vlan push is it is it's not going to be interesting to the user that that you know how, how many packets went through that then then we don't need to uh give, give it that and in that case now now the the only now now hard, hardware counters are Corresponding one to one with, um, with software actions for which we are bothering to do stats. Um, yeah, I'm having some problem digesting this. That uh, the issue that the user does not care about villain. I mean, it's it's like the villain push action because I can understand where you're coming from, but this creates a, a big difference between the software model and the hardware model, meaning that we're changing the user behavior when 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 flows are offloaded. Uh, if it is in software, everything is counted, and everything is accounted for. Uh, and maybe here, maybe it's uh, it's it's with like with A1, it's maybe the user can understand what happened. But what happens if you look at the branching actions later, and you have instead of just A3 and A4, it would continue to A5 and A6 on each branch. So and uh, and assuming these are actions that the user is interested in, which is a which is a vague definition. I don't know what. The user is really interested in, then it becomes really complicated uh, from from so, the user <laughs> so it's it's essentially what I'm the, the the thing I'm suggesting for the hardware stats is how the software stats also used to work because, like I say, something like uh, uh, struct TC action ops act VLAN ops uh, didn't used to have a dot stats update method. So it used to be that you wouldn't that if you set if you put this thing together in software, you wouldn't be getting software uh, stats on on a one either. Uh, so 
that whether so i guess the question is were those were stats added to those software actions because someone encountered a need or was it because, or, or was it that someone essentially saw oh we've got this asymmetry and you know i'll just make this neat i don't know it was before my time <laughs> yeah um can, can you guys hear me yep oh okay is this still working um yeah i think so this is my view i mean i'm not involved with the drivers but i would say well traditionally every action should have in, uh, um uh, uh, counters right and but if you if you're in if you're limited in hardware it should be nice to be for this to be optional where i don't want the counters then i don't want them then you don't give them to me right but it should be probably a user decision as opposed to uh the hardware makes that decision i don't know because then there's inconsistencies between different drivers if you if you go that path so there, there is also there is already a mechanism also for the user to make a decision about whether they want uh, hardware stats on each action. There's so in the um, in the uh, struct flow action entry, there is an HW stats member which is an enumerator and can be things like uh, flow action HW stats delayed. And so, so I, I can't remember what the UAPI for, yeah, you know, what the what the TC command lines for setting that looks like. But there is uh, there is a mechanism for the user to say I don't, I, I do or don't want uh, counters hardware stats on this action. So maybe maybe we just make it based on that and you know update the user land things like uh, OVS to only ask for the stats that they want, and then the driver just. Um, says everything that you want a stat on, I will just allocate a hardware counter for, and then we and then again we avoid the mapping layer and we just sort of trust the user to not use up too much resources. I can, I, I can understand the motivation to to have like a very clean approach to support all the core reaction counters. It's it's something that. Um, the motivation for it, I guess, it's clear. But the thing is, it's that it's 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 rather complex to implement because right now, if we're passing it to the user to make the decision, then then we would need to support the decision that the user does want the stats for every action, and and we and to support that, we would need to implement a rather complex mechanism that that is based that that is also complex to develop and maintain and also um, has performance points. And the question is, if, if this is something that we want to do based on the fact that there is actually no actual user that was asking for this. Like, like we don't have a real use case of someone. I know that there is a difference between the soft, uh, how the user can use it in software. Um, the user can do, the user can use this in software, but um, OVS, for example, will not use all this mechanism, and now we will, it would be the mainstream solution uh, uh, in the platform and in the drivers to support the use case that will probably not be used, like a way to action to query a specific action counter instead of a filter, instead of just dumping filters. You see my what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that I'm worried that we will create a very complex mechanism that no one will use it in, in practice. Well, th th this is why I'm saying rather than creating anything complex, let's try and take the the simple mechanisms that we currently have got, the almost simple-minded mechanisms, and just try and connect them together. So, you know, we if we say trust the user to say whether we want stats or not, use the hardware action API for for getting all the stats, and then if if a if user space like OVS is not using that correctly, or not using that efficiently, then maybe we then focus efforts on improving OVS to use. I mean, I mean these are AP, APIs that do already exist. So it, at least for the um, whether to request hardware stats, you know, it could, you know, we could. Yeah, it, it, it could be taught to use that today. Yeah, that could basic. That could. That could help the, the the on the performance front, right? If 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 
OVS, for example, would configure that it doesn't need it, and then for performance, we would not do all this complex work. But but in terms of um, of complications in the drivers, to implement, we would still the drivers would still implement would still need to implement the use case where the user specifies that it does want the right. But in the if in in the case where the user asks for counters on every action, you just uh, allocate a separate hardware counter for each action. So yes, it's p potentially inefficient using more resources on your hardware, but it means that you're avoiding all that complication of the mapping layer and the locks and lists and so on. Um, well, yeah, so, so, so I'm saying you never implement the complicated thing in the driver because that's yeah that's always going to be too complicated. <clears throat> but we're, without implying anything about anyone's hardware, that's not necessarily possible in all hardware, right? Right. I mean, I but, don't but have any of them. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe people don't use that feature on that hardware, and then it's okay. I mean, remember, it's, all, it's also the case that you can always, you, you can reject an offload based on the fact that you're asking for too many calendars here, and user lands could be taught that that is one of the many, many things that uh, they have to recognize that, oh, I can't do no, that with this hardware. But for example, currently there is no issue. That, for example, right now you can have thirty actions which basically hang on one on one counter, and and like like the way that we currently have. If if you don't have any branching actions, then all the filter actions can hang on one counter. So now you're introducing a restriction which is not really. Again, it's it's not really. I I do want like the user says I do want an action a, a counter per action, and now we're creating a limitation that that this should not necessarily apply. So, so I guess one way to look at it is it, it, it sort of where, where does the complexity of the solution lie? So if you push it down to hardware, then the hardware people have to deal with it. Software people get something nice and clean. But it doesn't really solve the kind of problem that, that Oz is getting at. Is that maybe the hardware, you know, maybe it's not best to do it in hardware for some reason. Maybe the complexity should be pushed somewhere else. I mean, if you have all these different actions which are going to have <clears throat> essentially the same counter, or why, why do you need so many hardware resources devoted to it? Well, the answer here is to make the software interface cleaner, but is that the best approach? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why so that's why we we saw that uh, like it's uh, we currently have like a, 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 like currently the system is in some use cases broken, like the statistics are that there's they are currently broken with 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 bind actions and and, this, and especially like the future when we want to add the jump control. So so that's why we thought like the, the from a platform perspective, just adding an array of actions. For, for, for a way to for drivers to when they do the stats callback to just return an array of statistics per action when it is relevant is is like the the simplest solution from a platform perspective uh, it, it allows for drivers to incrementally support it uh, as according to their schedule and how do they see it fit and um, and and um, and it does leave, and, and I mean, we're not creating new problems. We're staying with the same issues that we currently have, like the certain limitations that we currently have with the solutions. We're not improving the solutions, but we're not working it any worse, I think. I cannot hear anyone if anyone's speaking.
Yeah, it, it seems like we may have exhausted the topic. <laughs> the system decided. <laughs> uh, can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. No, the mic wasn't working yet. We, ha we haven't exhausted yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah, I'm exhausted. <laughs> So uh, I guess I'm going to see if there's a consensus. Is there, is there at least a path forward in this discussion? I, I was trying to follow, but I was not 100% sure. Oz and so, Ed, so I, think, guys... I think we were discussing. I think I think we're basically aligned. I think I think we understand each other in terms of the approaches and what can be done. And the two main approaches is either I think it's as it said in the beginning. We either want to support the 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 the, the ability to query a statistic per action. Or we want to take the approach of using more or less the, exa the existing APIs, just extending them to just return an array of actions for a specific use case, which has the branching actions that need it. Um, we know that, that the query action can introduce some issues for drivers, um, or which may involve some uh, maybe or maybe um, um, resolved even with with having some user access and 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 the last point that I was making is maybe just uh, as we said that there are some few use cases that are broken with the current solution to fix them maybe it's enough to to just extend the flow offload API this is what we sent on the RFC just to to uh, to extend the flow the current flow offload API to allow an array of actions when it is required the every, every driver can decide if and when it wants to support this at its own um, at its own schedule at its own um, uh, uh, according to its own priorities and um and 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 it is true that we're not making the situation the, the current limitation we're not improving on the current limitations but we're not introducing new limitations this is like my perspective um, um i don't know what simon and edward <laughs> yeah, I think that does kind of summarize things. Uh, I, I agree with your summary. Uh, I guess that the thing that is unclear is, is which of these two main options we prefer. Yeah. I, I do think there was a certain elegance to Ed's suggestions in terms of it pushes things more towards common code. Yeah. Uh, okay, there um, is. Yeah. Some question from uh, how do we do this? Yeah, there's a question in the chat. Uh, do you want to come on stage? I'll show it on stage. I'm sorry. I think I can show it on stage. It's already showing. Huh? It's already showing? Yes. Where? Here. Oh, okay. I can see it here, though. <laughs> okay. Can, you, can, can people see that question? Yeah. It, it, I think it's uh, more of a comment than a question. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah so, so it's a, yeah, so it's like every hardware vendor and it's um, and, and the way that it implemented its hardware, like how counters are implemented, it's a specific hardware. So um, I, I, the kind of hardware I've seen has the, the its counters are separate, right? I'm going to use my yeah. phone. I don't know if this is common or not, but you have an array of counters and each one of them is indexed so we start from i think index zero to n minus one and when you have an action you basically point to one of these right yeah so that's not how it works yeah so so that, that maps very well with, with the tc actions because tc actions have indices the only problem is when you have different kinds of actions and that 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 uh, the counter indices are monotonically incrementing and they're shared by all kinds of actions, right? A police could use one of those actions, uh, a redirect could use one, a drop could use one. So you somehow have to have a translation uh, between what the hardware array has versus what your action is, is using. Uh, am I off or this is how it works? You're almost there, but there's a, big, there's a small difference that when we integrate with hardware actions, we're not returning absolute action. Like we're, we're only returning the differences from the last query. So, so when you return a difference and you have um, and you and, and there's one hardware counter that hangs on two TC actions, 
the, and you query just one, like, for, so you have one hardware counters, behind it you have two TC actions, and you query for the first TC actions, you need to compensate that for the second TC action. So that's software needs to do. Like what, what you're describing is right in terms of hardware, but the software needs to mitigate the fact that it needs to return the counter, like the statistics difference from the last query. So this is why it's get a bit complicated. Yeah, in, in, in your uh, earlier slide, you said you're, you say you're talking about cookies as ways to map to these uh, counters, but I, I was kind of surprised by that. You don't use the indices to map to the counters. No, no, the cookies are for flows. Ah, we can also introduce cookies, but um, um, well, cookie, well, the index is, um, it, it's actually a two tuple. It's it's the type and index. So, or you can create a cookie, but what's, um, but it's tomato, tomato, right? It's just a way to identify the action. I see, so it's an action ID plus action index. Right. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so um, one, th so the thing about uh, the, um, the counters with the difference i mean that's it's because it's that is, is essentially giving you kind of clear on read semantics is what make that's what makes it difficult to uh share a counter between yeah to, to, to have um multiple actions but what you could do if you've got multiple actions using the same counter all you really need is to have separately a per software action data structure that's storing the last count that that software action read from the counter. Right, right. So, right. so I, don't, I, don't, I don't think you end up needing any uh, really complicated data structures. No, it, it, it would have to be locked, right? Because it can be updated from multiple threads. And, and, and Yeah, but that, that can just yeah. be a spin lock. Like, it doesn't need anything heavyweight. Yeah, I can, I, actually, I have. I can share a slide on this. Um, it, it, again, it's, it's it's only a matter of implementation. But, I mean, uh, I mean, we're not sharing counters now, and we already have that spin lock there, just because I'm being paranoid. Um, I think you would need something like this. You would need like um, like um, when, when we drafted this, you, you would probably need the hash to identify from, from from an ID to get to an action. From the action, you can look up its counter. But once you update, once you read this counter, you would need to update all the actions that hang on that counter. Uh, uh, no, so what I'm saying is you don't need to update them all because you don't, so in the action counter object, you uh, uh, instead, you don't store the current count and the last red count there, what you do is you store the current count in the action counter object, and then each action stats object stores the last count that it read and reported based on. So you only need to update that one action stats object to say, I've now reported these another 10 packets or whatever. So then when you come along later and do a stats callback on the other action stats object, it's it's going to be reporting the difference based on the last counter it saw, which yeah. is not the same. So then you don't need to go. You don't need to go through and poke all the other action stats objects for this action counter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, all right, guys. I'm, I'm, we're going to cut it short in about three minutes. Maybe to, we have one more topic, right? Yeah. So. Um, I, I'm not sure what is the bottom line. I mean, we had a discussion here, but I'm not sure how do we want to um, follow up. I guess um, um, maybe I can take it with Edward again, Simon. Maybe also Marcello, if you want to um, to enlighten us with all the OVS um, requirements. Um, so I think we will we will continue to to discuss this on. On emails. Okay. Um, we'll think about it this again. We'll we have this again. We'll try to summarize everything and start a new discussion over email. Okay. Yeah. Th thank you, guys. Hey. Yep. Thank Boss. you. Mm -hmm. uh, we can also continue discussing these on TC meetups. Sure. Sure. I will jump. Sorry, I need, I need to echo. echo.
Yeah, we, we hear an echo. <laughs> Yeah, it's on now. Yeah. Oh, okay. David, are you on? Yeah, I'm not sure if he wants to discuss it. Right. So if he is not on, I'll just Should introduce the topic. Yeah, he is. Yes. yes, I hear myself in the echo, so yes. <laughs> Hi. Uh, okay, so uh, there's another small topic and uh, it regards uh, what we are seeing um, with the uh, a couple of patches that landed uh, in OBS. Those patches uh, are exposing a behavior that's uh, a long-standing behavior with TCB reduction. It's quite easy to see uh, uh, lockup of the TCP stack uh, when the mirrored egress to ingress action is used. So uh, if a socket connects through the mirrored egress to ingress action, it's quite easy to see that uh, many TC mirrored actions uh, are, uh, are called in a nested way. But uh, we don't reach the recursion limit because uh, the soft lockup happens before. So it happens that the, the uh, socket lock for the TCP socket just is taken twice. It's taken by the sender and by the receiver. This causes a lockup. The easiest solution that we found is to uh, just defer the transmission of TC and using the backlog. Uh, we are just doing the same way that uh, the virtual Ethernet driver does and also the loopback driver does. Uh, however, there's uh, some opposition to this approach and the opposition is legitimate because uh, it breaks the user expectation. Like uh, Kong Wang uh, noticed that uh, if we defer the backlog for the TC mirrored, then probably uh, we are losing the status of the list of the TC actions for those packets. So, yeah, that's the current state. Uh, one possibility might be to extend what we have in the TC mirrored control plane uh, and add another E action, which is no more egress to ingress or ingress to egress. It's called it backlog. I have a draft patch. If you want to see it, I can share it in the mailing list as an RFC. So, so, sorry, David, I, I don't really understand the real issue. That, so, is there a loop? An infinite loop? 
Uh, no, it's a soft lock. Yeah, draw it. yeah, why don't you draw it up there? Yeah. Oh, thanks, Marcel. Yep. So as we have OVS here, we don't really have network name spaces. So let's say that we have a TCP socket here. We have another one here. This is local. Lo with All local. local. Yeah. In BM Metal or VM or something like that. Mm, yeah, same host. Very same host. Okay. Yeah. Same network name space. <laughs> More specific. <Okay. laughs> so this one sends a pack like it's hitting OVS BR. It's a, a bridge from OVS. This the one camera. will use then the egress Q disk. Sorry for my awesome writing. Uh, yeah. I don't think the camera is capturing correctly. Yeah. Oh, right, right. So we just, because we want to see people remote, maybe. Uh, no, you need to capture that whole thing. No, it's going to be scrolled. Oh, oh okay. it's, this one is cropped. Oh, the mini view is cropped. Uh, OK, so let me see. But for remotes, uh, it's okay, oh, OK, they can see it remotely, same. Yeah. OK. OK. So we will have a TC filter here. It's on the egress side that we'll call mirrored. Um, so this could be like a, this arrow is a VEF, I think, or something like that. What is this interface? Uh, the one from the TCP. You said it was in the namespace. No, no, okay, no, no namespace not, here. So everything is on okay. the let's say main namespace. Right. Yeah. Uh, we have the OVS bridge here, and mm -hmm. since uh, sure, some time now, OVS supports using OVS bridges and TC filters on it. Mm -hmm. So installs uh, class act uh, QDisk here. Filters in there, it will call mirrored, and but there will be a flow here that outputs this packet to, let's say, a VF representer. Because this packet is um, no, not a VF representer. Sorry, it will go through the very same bridge again. Right, I mean, it's going back to the same bridge, right? But yes, now yes, on Ingress. Yes, yes. Uh, another socket uh, on the same bridge. Yeah. It's really weird to write. So it's on. looping back to the same device, is it? Um, yeah. Do you consider that to be like the same net dev? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's really. OVS bridge one, OVS bridge one to okay. make it really expensive. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, one backtrace that I remember having seen, it's like, well, this act was waking up by a timer. Mm -hmm. And then it sent some packet here. And this socket reacted and sent another packet back. And it triggered similar flows from one way or another. What, what is the way back? Is there another mirade backwards? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you have another ob obvious VR one again, and you mirror it to the ingress of that guy. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so to draw the better diagram, you will have you still have the response coming back. <laughs> something oh, like this, I think, right? Where well, you still have the obvious VR one here, going again to obvious VR one ingress. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. which then goes back that way, yeah? Yeah. So you have an interesting loop, right? OK. Um, and it's not a problem unless this uh, timer kicks in, I guess. It, it, th when does the lockup happen? Is it because? Because this socket, mm -hmm. when it woke up and sent a packet, right. it was uh, holding a, a lock. 
why you sign in the package and right. there's no uh, this is all on the same code stack right right so the lock is still uh, being held when this socket is processing okay and, and but then this but different up, locks right send, it's, it's, that socket is specific to that guy not this this is socket one right socket one lock as far as i understand right okay. david yeah so it's the same lock of two different sockets Okay, and there's a deadlock from this? There I'm is a deadlock. Sure. Uh, yes, there is a deadlock because... Uh, uh, so basically, it's not a, a loop of the same packet. It's the TCP socket that is sending uh, a segment, TCP socket 1, and then the TCP socket 2 is sending an uh, acknowledgement for the segment. Mm -hmm. The problem is that uh, the, the lock for TCP socket 1 is still held. And as soon as TCP socket 2 tries to grab its own socket, lock that complains because uh, it has the same class. Uh, if you use uh, um, IPv4 and IPv6 uh, socket, it becomes a real deadlock, not just a warning, because uh, uh, the sockets being held is uh, for from TCP socket one, the uh, socket lock for uh, inter for a TCP sorry for EPV4, and uh, on receiving the packet, uh, the, it's uh, uh, getting the socket for IPv6. So it uh, it's a nested locket lock that uh, uh, that really blocks uh, the packet. I just posted the whole discussion with the splats in the chat, so you might read the the, um, the deadlock in the thread. Maybe. Okay. No, look back doesn't have any problem with this because it puts everything in the backlog, doesn't it? No, there's a queue in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. I think that's probably what you're going to have to do as the ultimate solution for this. And, but that, for Myriad, according to Kong, it breaks some user expectations. Because then you can't know if Five the pack is going out or... Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm still struggling as to... There has to be a queue somewhere here, right? There's queues everywhere. No, I mean, for you to redirect... <laughs> no, that's the thing. So receipt path doesn't have any queues. In it normally. So this diagram, you can basically change it to where you have. Give him the mic if you mind. Because uh, for remote users. So basically, you could restructure this diagram as, you know, it never really gets to OBS BR. Mm -hmm. Instead, it hits the mirror and essentially does a hairpin and goes right back up the stack. And this is kind of a exception to the normal path because normally for a loop back, you'd go down a loop back and it'd enqueue on backlog and then come back up. So that's why loop back doesn't have this issue. So what you're looking at right now is essentially we've added a middle step. So now your transmit is trying to do the receive in real time and it's causing all these lockups to where essentially you're uh, sitting on your TX lock, uh, which is needed on the other side in order to process it. So, Right. Exactly. So this happens on loopback device. What, what, what is the socket is... is um... No, it won't happen on the loopback device. But it won't happen on the loopback device because the loopback device uses the backlog. And so that's the thing is the, the quick and dirty solution is put on backlog, but then you lose your uh, TC metadata, basically, because it's basically dropping all of that. So you'd have to probably store some extra metadata in the packet itself, in the SKB, um, in order to get around some of that maybe. I don't know if that'd be a doable solution or not, but that's essentially the problem you're running into is you've created a loopback that doesn't function like a loopback is what it comes down to. And to add on that, uh, we also have differences on semantics on metadata that's attached to packets. We have already have problems with uh, stale information on the packets. Well, originally, OVS works with the if tunnels and it's crossing namespaces. So we have the DST entry, we have the CT entry, and the SKB getting cleared at those moments. But when uh, this started happening, these weren't getting cleared 
because, well, it's not crossing him spaces. But at the same time, OVS needs them cured, otherwise the matches will be different. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So we started... You don't scrub them, them, basically, but... Yeah. Okay, I think I get the issue now. I don't know. Now maybe the solution is... Uh, which. What is Congress agreeing with? Basically, he doesn't want to put it on the backlog. Ah. Uh. The That's problem it. is the backlog loses the data. That's the thing is, in my mind, it, it makes more sense to essentially, if you're switching from ingress, egress to ingress, you're going to have to lose some data is what I think it, you're, it, you're ultimately going to come down to. Because essentially you're making that have to do a hairpin turn. And at that point, the problem is, you know, you could end up in so many different lock collision situations doing something like that. So in, in TC proper, I don't, I think if you redirect to egress, it always ends up on a queue. Right, that's traditional. Right, if I'm, I I do it from ingress to egress, there's a queue. And if I do it from egress to ingress, there's a backlog queue. I, I'm not sure why you're not going through the backlog queue. You should be able to. You mirror. No, it doesn't go to the backlog in this case. So if you go so ingress to, to ingress, uh, the in, in during the transmission on uh, a net device. You enter the ingress, the native receive stuff. Does it depend on the device then? Because the device could, um, I, I thought some devices you just queue on backlog. Yeah, like like virtual Ethernet and loopback do this. So I was initially I was even not able to correctly reproduce the thing because I was introducing and using uh, virtual Ethernet and loopback. But however, if you just uh, uh, do the transmission between uh, socket one and socket two, just using TC mirrored, you get this uh, transmission and reception in a single stack frame. So you get also the, de the deadlock. Okay, so we, we're slightly running out of time here. Shriji just walked in to try and kick us out. But so, yeah, maybe, maybe the, uh, we, we can discuss some more. Marcelo during the week, right? Because I don't know what the solution is. I thought yeah. you always had, uh, a w depending on the device, it's a choice whether you wanted to go the backlog or not. Like NAPI, you may bypass things. And... Okay, so okay. with that, David, I'm sorry, we are not gonna co reach a conclusion, but we'll talk to Marcelo during the week. And you will find us in, in the conference yeah. sooner or later. Are you, are you coming? Still no, uh, but I, I'm joining virtually, so we, we can. Yeah, find okay. Me yeah, we can, we can, we can pick a breakout room and talk. Then. Okay. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Thank you, everybody. We'll call it a wrap here. How do we get out of this again? End session.